WMNH. Rip the knob off. Welcome back, everybody. It's Matt Connerton Unleashed as we have entered our second hour today. Numero dos. We are live from the studios of WMNH 95.3 FM in glorious downtown Manchester, New Hampshire. And I believe uh, via Skype we have a member or members of the band uh, Bullet to the Heart. Hello. Hey, what's up? Hey, what is going on? Hey. We got two of us. Two of you. Okay, who are the two that I have? Well, I know who one of them is because I, rec- I you know, female voice, of course, but uh, go ahead and introduce yourselves. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Audrey Queen, a.k.a. the Queen of Darkness, lead singer from Bullets of the Heart. And then you got Draven DC on the drums. Well, hello, uh, welcome, and I'm very, uh, I'm very glad to uh, get to speak with you today because uh, Jenny and I have been really enjoying your music a lot. And are you on tour right now, by the way? Because I know you've got a big, uh, big tour. Uh, not currently. That we have a small tour, um, middle of February, which is I think next week, and then we oh. have a big, big tour in May. Oh, okay. Uh, what's happening in May with with the big, big tour? Tell us about that. Uh, so we are going on tour with Loudness. Uh, heavy metal 80s rock band and the mm. midnight devils uh, it's a 45 day run oh very cool wow are you going all over the united states are you going to europe where are you going with us uh all over the united states it starts off in new jersey all the way to california and everything in between oh very cool yeah we were looking at some tour dates i think the closest you're coming to us here in uh, Manchester is uh, is Worcester, which is uh, they pronounce it differently there. I can't say it the way they pronounce it in that city, but uh, <laughs> which uh, which has a, a pretty cool music scene and there's a lot of uh, a lot of great places there. Uh, but uh, yeah, I, I love the sound. And how long have uh, how long have you been together? How long has uh, uh, Bullet to the Heart been around? Uh, 2017. Oh, okay, longer than I thought. Has it always been the the lineup that it is now? The four of you. Yes. Excellent. And um, you are, are you all natives of Chicago? Is that where you're from originally? Yes. All of us. Okay. Okay. And um, what's the the scene like there? Because I was looking, so I know Chicago a little bit because I uh, used to spend the summers there when I was a kid. I have family out there. Uh, Great city. And um, I was surprised uh, looking up online, I did some quick research earlier just on the Chicago music scene, and I didn't realize, I mean, you know, when people think about uh, cities that are important in music history in the United States, you know, obviously New York and and Seattle, of course, the grunge era coming out of Seattle and, and even pre-grunge. But um, pe- people don't talk about Chicago quite as much in terms of, you know, like you think about the Smashing Pumpkins and, and Cheap Trick and, and uh, Disturbed, of course, comes out of Chicago more recently. But um, I was looking it up, and Chicago's got quite a... Uh, here's what I found. Uh, there's um, the music industry in Chicago uh, employs nearly 13,000 people in 831 businesses. And uh, and the uh, number of musicians in Chicago is twice as many uh, as in Seattle and 10 times as many in Austin, Texas, which is known for being a real music city. So that was uh, impressive to me to learn that. Um, is that... Yeah, I, a lot. <laughs> yeah, yeah. In, in your experience there, uh, coming up uh, in the Chicago music music scene where you're based, I mean, is it... Um, are there a lot of bands in your genre? Because I know from when I was a kid, Chicago's a mix of, you know, you got a lot of jazz, you got a lot of blues and, and all that. But are, are there a lot of uh, heavy rock bands in Chicago? Um, so there, so the modern scene is very, very, very competitive. Um, but the scene, the, I'm sorry, the, the genre that dominates the scene right now is metalcore. Okay. Okay. So you kind of look at modern metalcore, uh, vibe going on a lot in the, uh, in like the bottom lounge subterranean kind of venues. And then the other genre that's really heavy here is pop punk. Okay. Yep. That makes sense. Um, so for what you're doing, uh, is it a little bit more difficult to find, uh, venues there to play because, you know, you're not metalcore, you're not pop punk. Is it, um, uh, has that been a challenge or does it actually help you stand out in some ways because it's not as competitive in your genre? Um, you know, it's a little bit of both. Um, it's hard to get a show where it's completely all, you know, alternative rock, alternative metal, female fronted bands. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of times we get put on these other female fronted shows just because we have a female in the band, which female fronted is not a genre. Right. (laughs) Um, We are. Yeah. But we are always, Oh, Hey, there's a, 
female punk band want to open? And we're like, oh, I mean, <laughs> we will, but I don't know how well that's going to work out. But then uh, to answer your second question, it has helped us stick out as a heavy hitter in the scene Good. because we are one of a kind. We're the only ones doing that. There's only one Audrey. There's only one bullet to the heart. That's really good. Oh, that makes sense. That makes sense. Um, where does the name come from, by the way? It's a it's a pretty badass name. Where, who who came up with the name, and it, it, does it have any particular uh, inspiration behind it, or did it just sound cool? Or so um, I wrote a song back in the day when we went under a different name. It was called Bulletproof, and in Bulletproof, I say um, took a bullet straight to my heart. And when we were thinking of different names, because our name was very generic and it didn't stand out. Um, Driven was like, hey, what if we did Bullet to the Hearts? And we were searching on the web and Spotify and we're seeing how unique that was and nothing really came close to it. So we were like, all right, let's do Bullet to the Heart. Cool. That well, fits your sound too, you know? It's, um, uh, I, I like it a lot. And um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, has the sound uh, changed much? You've got a lot of, um, you've got a lot of videos, by the way, great videos that you have on YouTube and whatnot. Um, has, has the sound uh, ch changed or your approach to uh, production or songwriting, has, has that changed over the years or has it been pretty consistent? No, it's changed a lot, man. Uh, something that we're big on in this band is ev evolution. Mm -hmm. um you you started out we recorded in, in some dude's basement <laughs> you know very uh you know oh it's a heavy riff it's fun oh it's a you know one of those younger kind of just riffs something new something fresh and we've slowly evolved we started taking our time we started purposely trying to fit in uh certain types of riffs or melodies and taking our time with this new stuff which is uh black widow which you just played which was awesome uh that is a new generation of bullets of the heart and uh, that's kind of more of the uh, idea and the, the concept that we want to go moving forward. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, it's something I noticed, too, specifically, uh, and I, I think it was that song where it really stood out to me, actually, uh, Black Widow, is the, uh, you know, I'm a bass player, so I tend to listen for this anyway. But I like the way the bass kind of uh, stands out a little bit, and it really drives the, uh, the heaviness of the song. I feel like that's kind of a... Um, something that's been a little bit lost in a lot of modern rock music is having the bass really, you know, not, not necessarily, I don't want to say that a lot of, um, in a lot of modern production, the bass gets lost in the mix necessarily, but it's not always as out front as it should be. And, um, that's something I noticed about your sound. And, uh, and I really dig that. Who's, who's your bass player? So our bass player is Tom Monroe, and he would actually be thrilled that you brought that up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I would like uh, I'd like to expand on that because uh, if you listen to a lot of the stuff off of uh, Bulletproof and Trials, mm -hmm. it's mainly guitar work. It's all guitar tapping, guitar melodies, heavy guitar influenced riffs, and uh, off of Transcendence, which is the latest album. Um, a lot of the songs are bass and drums. It, it, it started with a guitar riff, but we added a lot of bass and drums. And him and I, uh, when developing a lot of concepts to match Brian and the let room for Audrey to sing, him and I laid down this just fat beat of just bass and drums. And that's where a lot of our newer sound comes from. Yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up and caught that. That's uh, that's really cool. It's also a lot easier to write when there's just a bass riff because the vocals mm. can really shine. And Tom and I. Um, for a long time talked about just doing a, a bass lick with vocals and it just works out so perfectly because you don't have that guitar getting in the way so oh. it can really let give us chances to really come out and shine oh interesting okay so, so who writes the, uh, audrey do you write the lyrics or yes i do 100 percent, all her Oh, excellent. Excellent. I was reading something online about, and, and I, I thought this was interesting. I think I had seen this in another um, interview um, that you, your lyrics uh, usually are about things like, um, you know, mental health and, and uh, people dealing with addiction and, and things like that. And I, I got the impression that, and, and tell me if I'm right or if I'm off track, but I got the impression that you kind of go out of your way to write about things that are relatable, um, that are uh, problems that people have, 
instead of just doing, you know, because it's, you know, anybody can do the thing where you write some some aggressive sounding lyrics or, you know, some something that sounds angry or, or something that sounds nice, but it, it doesn't really have a lot of substance to it. But it, it seems like you kind of go out of your way to make sure that the songs actually mean something. Am I am I on the right track? That's the impression that I got. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, our biggest thing and my biggest thing is creating music with a purpose. And even with Black Widow, when I first got that bass riff, I was really thinking like, what could I, what, what does, what is the song telling me to write about? And being a woman in the music scene, it's Black Widow is a lot of that, of going to bars and being hit on by creepy people, not <laughs> just men, but creepy women, creepy people in general. Yeah. Um, and being cornered and just feeling kind of helpless mm -hmm. and, you know, having that like fantasy of like, I'm stronger than you. I have this confidence and giving off this, um, what I always do, this intimidation factor. Um, I try to let it down when I'm at the merch table so that <laughs> my fans can see that I'm not too scary. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, but when I am walking around a venue um, or I'm like, you know, just I'm always assessing my surroundings and making sure that my energy is giving off like, hey, don't come near me. Don't come at me. It's not inviting. So when I wrote Black Widow, I wanted to write that for people who experience that in bars, bartenders, mm -hmm. uh, music venue owners, security guards, anybody that's like in that type of situation, like, hey, you can be like this badass person. Like, let's go. Yeah. Uh, Jenny and I watched the video and we really liked the video. And now that you've further explained it, 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 it makes a lot of sense. And, and I think that's very relatable too. And that's a subject too, that we've, we've discussed on the show before uh, with uh, various people over the years is, you know, the, the, uh, some of what women go through in terms of uh, when you're in an environment, an environment where, you know, you're not necessarily safe or, or uh, not necessarily unsafe, but you kind of have to really, uh, be aware of what's going on around you and aware of your surroundings. And, and, uh, Oh, Jenny just shared a link in the chat room. Thank you, Jenny, to the, uh, the video there for uh bullet in the, um, uh, black widow from uh, Bull bullet to the heart. Um, yeah, it, by the way, the, the videos, you, you guys have a whole bunch of videos. They're very cool. Do you work with the same people on those every time or? Yes, we have worked from the very beginning locked inside with um, a man named Akash. He's with Ritual Noise. We sought him out when we first um, were doing videos. He was from a band called Shiva, mm. and he wanted to do videos and photography, so we gave him a chance, and he's really good, and he ups his game every time. And we've grown together. He's now family to us, mm. and um, he actually shot our wedding when Jim and I got married. Oh, so he, he's been with us from the beginning and he's always been helping us. So we, we really love him. He's a really great guy. Oh, very cool. Yeah. All the videos are, are really good quality. And, you know, because you know, sometimes you'll see a band and it's not to knock anybody, but sometimes bands will do videos that, uh, you know, that you, you can tell it's just kind of recorded on somebody's phone and they'll they'll put it out there. Maybe they don't uh, have the resources to do something uh, more professional. And, there's, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But I that's one of the things about. Uh, bullet to the heart that uh, Jenny and I both noticed is, you know, everything that you put out there is is very pro and top notch. And there was one video, too, that uh, really caught my attention. And uh, forgive me, I can't remember what song it was, but it's in the um, it's in the old uh, I, I think you call it letterbox. It's not widescreen. It's in the old square format, and it looks like a 90s video with the colors, and uh, you're all wearing white in the video, and it's got kind of a 90s vibe, and I, I don't know. Do you know the video that I mean? Yes, that is Decay. Okay, that was Decay. Was that intentional? Yeah. Because that's how I took it. I, I said to Jenny, I said, this reminds me of something I would have seen on MTV in the 90s, the, the video with the um, just the colors and the way that it's shot and in the letterbox. I don't know if that's letterbox. I don't know if I'm saying the correct thing, but, you know, where you, you don't have it widescreen, it's like the old style uh, television format. Yeah. So actually, if I could, uh, if I could, uh, expand on that. Yeah, you're totally right. Um, that video was inspired by a flyleaf video called all around me. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> that makes sense. Now that you say that. Okay. Yeah. Um, yep. Lacey Sturm and flyleaf is a huge inspiration on our project specifically on Audrey and I's side with music. Cause we grew up covering their music. Hmm. We grew up jamming their music. And in that video, they're in a big white room and all the paint starts to splatter. 
So we didn't, we couldn't get paint because of a budget, which is a great thing you brought up as well. So we were like, you know what, a little modern twist. We're going to do lights and we're going to do our, an artistic, uh, little thing with the lights. And that, mm. that's kind of the vibe of that video to tell that story. But oh. yeah, nineties, nineties, early two thousands, hard rock, man. That's my stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Very cool. By the way, I, I do have to ask, you know, you're from Chicago. Are, are you both uh, big disturbed fans or, uh, or, or are they kind of, uh, I mean, oh, no, yes, 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 sir. Yes, sir. We yes. uh, came, both came out the womb listening to Disturbed. <laughs> that, is, that is probably the dream band to play with and tour with. And yeah. we always say that every interview. That is the band where if you gave us an opportunity, that's who we would pick 100 percent of the time. Have you ever there uh, since they're from there? Have you ever had an opportunity to interact with them? Have you met them? I, I mean, I, I've always wanted to meet Dave Draymond. He seems like he'd be a fascinating uh, person to talk to. Do you know them at all? So it's funny, my um, mom went to a uh, show, I think it's at the Arcada, and it was a cover band night, they were covering Creed, and there was a guy, and people were taking pictures of him, my mom has a friend who's like six feet tall, and she's like, oh, hey, Marcy, like, go, go bump into him, go, go see who that is, and she bumped, in, bumped into him and said, oh, excuse me, and it was Dan Donegan from uh, <laughs> Disturbed, and he was like, oh, hey, ladies, you want to go, like, are hopping with me so like yeah sure and then he wanted to facetime me because my mom is my biggest fan so she was like oh look at my daughter's band bullet to the heart and uh oh. so i went to sleep and she's like oh yeah dan donegan wanted to uh you know facetime me last night but you weren't up i was like why did you not oh. blow my phone out? <laughs> oh my god <laughs> serious she's like oh yeah i didn't want to bother you i was like it's dan donegan from disturb bother me <laughs> Wow. Oh, him. I have not. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Um, yeah. Well, we have made it our goal. One day we were going to go on tour or open for you, for them and it's going to happen. Yeah. 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 I, it's funny. I, I just, I still remember, uh, the first time I heard stupefy back in the day, my dad loves that song too. That's such a, that's such a great track. And that's, that's when I first uh, really got into that band. But, um, yeah, uh, who else? Uh, uh, I know everyone always hates this question, but I, I, I am curious. Uh, can you talk to me about other influences, uh, other bands that uh, that you both are into? So um, some of my biggest influences is definitely Eddie Vedder from Pearl Jam, um, Chester Bennington from Linkin Park, um, Evanescence is a big one. I love Amy Lee. Um, and I can't remember his name, but the guy from Soundgarden. Chris Cornell. Chris Cornell. There he is. Yeah. So that my, it's mainly nineties grunge is yeah. um, my type of stuff. And then like throw in disturbed also bench sevenfold. Um, yeah. Okay. But, How about you driving? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So when I was, um, so I grew up on a lot of like eighties metal, like, uh, or like eighties rock, like Motley Crue and Megadeth and stuff. Um, and I always wanted to play guitar and I didn't understand, I guess, that I like drums until I saw them sevenfold. Oh, and I got to see the rev and that changed my whole perspective on music. I, I thought the guitarist was the coolest guy in the room. And I was like, no, it's the drummer. Look at that guy. Oh. And ever since then, I've been obsessed with playing the drums. And I was about 10 years old. Oh, I'll be damned. Hey, uh, we have a call. I think uh, somebody wants to talk to you. Hi, welcome to Matt Connerton Unleashed. Who's this? Hi, Matty. It's Gary. Hey, Gary. Um, another excellent group. I, I loved Black Widow. I loved hearing that song. That's a great track. Uh, her vo her oh, vocals Gary. are amazing. Yeah. Thank you. She has a very she has a very good voice. I I grew up with Lita Ford and everything, and and now I'm loving to hear all these young these young ladies out there really getting back into the into the metal. I'm. I'm an all genre type person, but I, I, I love hearing, and I, me too. I'm a, I love the bass line. I hate the mm -hmm. little winging, winging, winging guitar and just that <laughs> heavy bass and some line. And um, just a question <laughs> Do you do martial arts? Are you, are you really a badass lady? <laughs> Um, <laughs> I do not do martial arts, but, uh, get me in a situation and maybe I'll whoop somebody's ass. I'm not sure yet. I haven't been put in that situation Very yet. Very good. But... <laughs> I had four sisters and they were all like, you know, I'm a big guy. 
I, I, I'm an old guy, too. I'm 64, but I'm a big guy, and I was always a protector. And I'd see these, I'd see, I used to do some sound for my friend's band and everything, and I'd go into these bars, and I'd see these guys, and I'd like, and I'd see these poor girls go in just to have a good time. Mm-hmm. And I'm a protector, mm-hmm. and I'm like, no, you know, you don't do that. And um, I've had some nieces that I had to talk to guys about, uh, like, no. And, um, but yeah, I just, I heard you when you were saying, yeah, you got these and the song, I could hear that. I could hear that in the song. I write some stuff and everything, but I could hear that in the song, like, you know, back off and, uh, yep. I'm going to, you know, I'm here to, I'm here to have a good time. I'm here to sing, but I really enjoy your voice. I really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed the song. I'm, I'm amazed that, you know, and I love, I love hearing women's voices really shine out on a, on a song like that. And I'm very impressed. Well, very good. Very Thank impressed. You, we need more yeah. guys like you in the world. Ah, uh, very nice. Very nice. Oh, oh Gary. Thank you. But yeah, Maddie, you know, I always tell Maddie's Jenny that I love her and everything. And <laughs> if she's a, she's a rocking lady and I, I'm finding that more and more. And I'm so impressed with her because I have, like I said, I have mental illness and, um, it's, uh, depression and stuff like that. And, uh, I just hear people like, you know, oh, you're good at this. And, and some of the songs I hear are just really bad. But this is, this really, it, it pumped me up to hear this song. And, good, uh, good. Just keep doing it. Just keep rocking and just, wow. You're, you know, the, it's, I just love hearing women, women sing and really have a great voice. At it. And you have a great voice, honestly. No BS. Oh, very nice. And you, you and you do it sound you really do sound like a badass lady. So <laughs> I, 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 w- I wouldn't mess with you, and I would be appreciated if you know to see you and say, "Yeah, kick some guy's ass." That, that's my <laughs> that's my type of woman. <laughs> there you go. That's, that's my that's type awesome. of woman. <laughs> that she can handle herself. Right, right. You know. Well, all right, Gary. Well, thank. All you. All right. Well, I'll let you go. But uh, thanks again, Maddie, for a real a real another great group to listen to and. Uh, Geez, it's too bad you can't come up to Manchester because I come see you in Manchester. All right. You know? <clears throat> All right, Gary. And it's and it yeah, it's, people call it Wooster or Wooster, but yeah. you gotta come you gotta come into Manchester and play too. I'll come see you. There you go. <laughs> All right, yeah. Well, we'll see what this All right. Is. Hey, have a great night, Maddie. Love you, love you, Jenny, and I love you guys. Keep on rocking. All right. Bye. All right, Gary. Thank you. Thank you for the call. Well, that was very nice. Always uh, nice to hear from our friend Gary. Um uh, Jenny is reminding me too in the chat room. So Audrey, you are in uh, this contest for Inked Magazine. Yes, I am. I'm in the running for Inked Cover Girl. Oh, very cool. Yeah, she shared the uh, link uh, in the chat so uh, people can vote. Um, so how did uh, how how does this happen? Like, how do you enter a contest like this? Did you uh, were you aware of? Did you become aware of the contest and decided to enter, or did they approach you, or how does that work? So I knew of a woman that did it last year in a band from the rumors. Um, the bass player, Arnella, did it last year. So oh. I did know that it was going on, but I didn't know how to participate until I was scrolling on Facebook one day. And it said, do you want to win $25,000 and mm. ink from Ryan Ashley from Ink Master? And I was like, oh, yeah, I want to win that. So <laughs> I clicked on the link and I filled out the application form. And they said that they would reach out to me if I was put into the running. And um, I came home from work one day went to sleep and woke up and they said, you know, congratulations, you're in, set up your profile now. So I was like, so we called our friend Akash and we're like, Akash, I need photos. I don't have updated photos of my tattoos. Mm. And he was like, okay, well, let's go tomorrow. Um, Let's get some stuff done. And we got it quickly and I was in and I've been just hyping this up and I would really, I would really like to win because I would like to invest some of that into um, charities such as Nami Will Grundy, who helps uh, families and people going through mental illness and addiction. Mm. And then I'd obviously like to put it back into the bands so that we can continue performing and touring for our fans and getting out to like getting out to people like Gary who want to see us. Yeah. Yeah. That's excellent. So when does the, uh, do you know when the voting closes on that? So if you look in the app, it says in 10 days, it's going to oh. close, but um, they will get all the results and there will be another round. So this is going to be multiple rounds. Oh, so, okay. 
yes. So make sure like everybody is like keeping an eye on it and watching it. Um, I think you have to be in the top 10 to continue to move on. Then obviously when we get to the end, first place to win. Okay, and uh, we should tell people, too, I'm looking at this now, that you can get a uh, free daily vote, so you can actually vote more than once as long as it's not on the same day. So uh, yes. we can get uh, people uh, uh, supporting you for that. That's very cool, and uh, we'll share that out. And uh, I'm sure uh, I'm sure Jenny's already sharing it out. But, yeah, that's awesome. Good, good. Um, yeah, we'd love to. Is, is there um, – is, are there runner-ups, runners-up and all that, or is it just going to be one person, or do you know? Um, I've seen runner ups, um, but the first place will win the 25,000, the photo shoots and the, um, tattoo from the ink master. Okay. So I would love to get to the top. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll, we'll try to help you with that. That's awesome. And I'm sure, I mean, you all have a, a pretty big, uh, big following online. So I'm sure you've got a lot of people voting for you. I, I want to ask you too, just, and this, um, this has to do with a, a conversation that I heard uh, on the morning show here at WMNH uh, this morning. The guys were kind of talking about, um, uh, you know, how uh, the music scene has changed and and uh, how it's different from, you know, different from when they were younger and and how uh, now, uh, you know, there's there's bands out there, but you don't necessarily uh, know about them. Like when I was a kid, for example, MTV was all music videos and whatnot. And that's how a lot of my generation first learned about new music and whatnot. And radio has changed a lot too. And it's kind of become consolidated. And I usually tell people college radio has amazing things going on, but, um, but as far as mainstream radio, I think it's a lot harder to break through now uh, than it used to be, but uh, certainly you guys have had airplay in addition to, to everything else you're doing. So, so you've had a lot of success, um, how do you see it in terms of, well, let me ask it this way. I mean, do you have any advice for younger, uh, bands, artists that are starting out that are trying to, uh, trying to build a following and, and build a name, but they, uh, but, but it's, it, it, the business model has changed so much. The music industry business model and distribution model has changed so much. How do you do it? How do you get to the the level that you're at? And and you're obviously ascendant uh, looking at your uh, looking at everything you're doing online. You've got a lot of great stuff going on. How do you um, how do you make that happen? And do you have any advice for artists who are just starting out? Yeah, so I mean, it's a it's a little complicated, but uh, a lot of it's consistency. Mm. You know, uh, the the consumer fan base, right, that you're trying to reach, they all want to use spotify and youtube and those platforms so the first thing in my opinion is record a good product be true to yourself and then get on those platforms yeah. you know there's a big argument especially out in the music scene that spotify doesn't pay artists so that it's worthless but really there's a lot of people we wouldn't have been able to reach if it wasn't for spotify exactly and that, sucks that we have to enjoy the little beans that the the mass you know are, are given us like, Oh, I really want a whole plate of food, but the beans are fine, you know, but in a sense, I wouldn't have had certain experiences. We wouldn't have met certain fans at these shows if it wasn't for Spotify and uh, a lot of stuff on the internet that trying to scam you, but you have to uh, grow organically first and then yeah. put money in the promotion. You know, you got to build ads. You got to get on the radio shows. You got to do the interviews. You got to send it out. You got to grind. Right. And grinding is the big thing. I mean, if you're not serious about your music, if you're not pushing it, if you're not hitting up every single person you've ever talked to about it, um, you're not going to go anywhere. And unfortunately, that's where we're at with this modern technology. There's so many people uploading music a day, yeah, <laughs> uh, an hour, a minute, that it, it's so competitive. And you got to just stay with it, consistency. And don't be afraid to be out of, out of a comfort zone. I mean, one of the things that helped us, that helped us break through is being unique. It wasn't just another gent guitar metal band with a female. Mm -hmm. It's like, what's different? Add some melody, add a tone, change, you know, your idea, like switch it up. Don't be afraid to take uh, outside help or an outside ear and switch yeah. it up. You know, mm -hmm. you got to be unique and it's, it's harder than ever in this world. I mean, look at TikTok. A lot of these TikToks, they're stupid, but this person, there's a channel for it. There's a channel for it, whether, whether it's a certain genre or a niche or a type of humor you got to be different and that's really gonna take you over that mountain. Oh, yeah. And then just make sure you know who you are, be unique, um, pick a message, always stick with the message 
and lean on people, lean on your friends, make contacts, um, go see these other bands, mm -hmm. uh, hang out with these other people, like see them outside of their bands and just stay true to yourself. That is like the biggest thing. Don't just sell out because you think that's what's going to get you something because people in the music industry know when you're faking it mm -hmm. and they're going to easily try to get you out. So as long as you are true to yourself, people will accept you with open arms and uh, musicians will just fall around you and try to help you. And that's one of the biggest things that's also got us to the top. We love to help people. Mm -hmm. We love to use uh, local artists and uh, local bandmates. Yeah, yeah. Local for artists videos. for artwork and yeah. videos, that kind of thing. So just just stay true to yourself. That's the biggest thing. I think that's all really good advice. And, um, you know, it, it, in some ways it is harder than ever, of course, because you're competing against so much and so many people uploading music. But at the same time, uh, the technology that we have now also makes it uh, easier to uh, reach people uh, directly with your music. And, and you don't, you know, like when I was growing up, you know, the, the dream was to get signed to a record label, but now you can do it all yourself. Um, yeah. Are, are you, are you signed uh, to a label or are you doing this all DIY or? No. So uh, really everything is uh, DIY. Um, like I, I own a, I guess what you would call a record label, like, like legally, oh. but really it's just distributing our music. So I'm just doing the same thing a record label would do, but I'm not taking money from the band. Okay, gotcha. You know, so you, you and there's services for that. You could use a CD baby or a distro kid, get your music on there, look into that research, mm -hmm. that idea. I mean, you could build a what a record label is. What is a record label? It's a it's distribution. You know, and record labels now for the big bands, like for a disturbed and people of that caliber, they're just piggy banks now. Right. Oh, you want a video that's gonna cost fifty grand? We gotcha, but you gotta make that back. Mm -hmm. and back in the day, the MTV days, a lot of these smaller bands were getting really screwed over because it was like a like a 70 30 split and then they were like oh we're famous but we're poor <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah and so i mean for us it's it's all it's all independent um we're not even allowed on certain radio stations because we don't have that industry contact but you know what that's why we get on radio stations like wmnh mm -hmm. you know like you guys yeah. want us on here we we love to be a part of it like you guys are real you're authentic i don't have to pay my way onto this onto this thing, you know? Yep. Um, and that means a lot for upcoming artists. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, but for shows, for shows, we are currently with pavement entertainment. Okay. Okay. So and that's a, that's a whole nother conversation, but yeah, it's one of those things where I uh, get a good booking agent, mm -hmm. whether it's a local one, a national one, start small and slowly build up. We have been touring nationally since 2019. So that's about two years of being a band and, uh, hottest thing is you got to be consistent covid obviously screwed that up but mm. we are trying to come back to a uh, to be a force to be reckoned with yeah are, are there uh, are there challenges with that that you weren't encountering before because uh, I, I know with inflation everything's so expensive now there, there's some bands i've been seeing and i'm sure you see it too there's uh there's been some uh big name acts that have said not not like huge but uh, because, you know, Beyonce can tour and she's got all the money in the world and it doesn't matter. But, you know, but yeah, there's, but, but there's been some bands that have said, yeah. what's that? Headliners. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's There's been bands that have said, you know, we just can't do it right now with, with uh, everything's uh, so much money. It actually loses money to go out on the road. Has, has that been a, a struggle for you at all or? Um, so it has been, um, we have figured out, I have a very business goal oriented mind. I kind of have something figured out. We're not making tons of money, yeah. but we, it, it is profitable to go out on the road. Good. And, Good. uh, the thing is you just gotta, you gotta figure stuff out correctly. And, and, and it, it is hard logistically gas, food, uh, parts for vans, RVs, all that stuff is, it's terrible right now, but mm -hmm you got to push through. And honestly, like we all love music so much. And it's the only thing that's keeping some of these members alive really is, is this band. And, uh, you know, we want to do it. That's all we want to do. I mean, we even, uh, we all live together actually fun fact for you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be Yeah. We, we all live together as a group and that's to consistently make content, write music, record, uh, do TikToks, mm -hmm. book shows together. It's it's all in the name of the game. You know, it's all to just stay relevant. We decided we're just, you know, we like her and I got married 
a year ago and we were like, Hey, we're, we're moving in with the guys. Like we're just doing it. Like just take, take that flight, you know? Yeah. But no, it is very hard. You just got to kind of find your muse. You got to cut corners. You can't do the hotel thing every night. I mean, we, right. uh, we went on tour in 22 with the rumors and, uh, we were li- literally like living in the, in the van that we had and it, it's hard. It sucks, but you go out on stage, you're meeting those people, you're getting your music out and you're like, Hey, like it's worth it for that little bit of time, you know? Right. Right. Absolutely. Um, no, that's, that's great. And you've got, a. uh, we'll, we'll let you go in a minute. You, you've been very generous with your time and we appreciate it. I've, I've, I've kept you long, but I've, I've enjoyed the conversation so much. Um, we should mention you've got a new single coming up soon, right? Yes. yes yeah. Valentine's day. Excellent. Excellent. What's the name of the track? It is called graveyard lovers. <laughs> I love it. It sounds like, uh, sounds, uh, was it uh, inspired by the Misfits or something? That's what it evokes for me when I hear that name. Uh- <laughs> um, it was, in, like, when I wrote it, it was kind of inspired by Tim Burton's The Corpse Bride. Oh, okay. So that's kind of what we're going to do for the video. Um, it was originally called Graveyard Love. And then when we uh, recorded, our guy was like, hey, how about Graveyard Lovers? That sounds cool. Yeah. And I was like, all right, we'll go with it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So that comes out on Valentine's Day. Excellent. Excellent. Well, I look forward to hearing that. And, um, okay. Well, like I said, you've, you've been generous with your time and we appreciate it. Um, before we, uh, before we let you go, uh, Audrey and uh, Draven, uh, anything we should know about, um, uh, you know, uh, social media and how to find you online. Obviously we have listeners who are going to want to keep up with everything that you're doing and with the tour and the music and all of it. So, uh, what should we, what should we know as far as, uh, keeping up with uh, bullet to the heart? Uh, yeah, I mean, if, if you could search Bullet to the Heart, we are probably on it. We are everywhere. Amazon, Spotify, YouTube, TikTok, Twitch. We Twitch every Sunday. Uh, we have a Patreon. If you want to follow secret uh, exclusive posts, maybe even hear Graveyard early on, subscribe to our Patreon. Um, but no, we're very active on Facebook for shows. Uh, I would I would definitely check out our Facebook page, um, Spotify, uh, music. We've got tons of videos, as you pointed out. Just if you could search it, we're probably on there. So just give us a search, give us a like, follow, share, comment. I want to know where you're from. I want to come see you guys. So let us know where, uh, where we're needed. Yeah. So tour, tour coming up. We have an EP coming out. Yeah. EP in May, oh. tour in May. Excellent. Excellent. So that's where Graveyard, Revenants and Blackwood are going to be as well as two other tracks. So keep posted on that. And uh, yeah, we hope to see some people out on the road on tour. We're excited. Very cool. I'm actually going to play that track, uh, Revenant, uh, when we conclude speaking. Uh, that's uh, I love that song. So uh, we're going to give that a spin in a moment. But uh, Audrey, uh, Draven DC, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been amazing. I, I really love talking to you, and uh, we'll have to have you back on soon. You've got a lot going on, so I'm sure we'll find uh, I'm sure we'll find more stuff to talk about in the near future. But uh, we'll let you go. But thank you both so much. Uh, I, I appreciate yeah. it. Thanks for having us on. I just want to say I love your voice. Very radio. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so I, I, I love doing voice work. So that, oh. uh, you know, captivated me. So it was really cool. Oh, well, that's, well, that's nice to hear. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you both. I appreciate it. And uh, we'll talk soon, I'm sure. Yes. Yeah. Keep in touch, man. Rock on. Thank you for having us. You got it. Take care. Bye-bye.